Welcome back to chapter five. So in this lesson, we're going to dig into probably what you're most anxious for is linking from one page to another asynchronously. So we're going to begin by learning how to link from quote unquote page to page while all of that content is still within the same HTML file. So the advantage to this is uh, caching because you're still only working with one page. And then we use data role, the data role custom attribute to determine which page again quote unquote is displayed at a time so let's go into our editor we're gonna move back to espresso and now here is what we began with so we had our opening uh, markup that links to the style sheet the script files and then we have our opening div so let's go ahead and view this and as you'd expect here is what we get so now what we want to do is link to another page just to save time let's copy this and simply bring it down to the bottom. However, notice here I've applied an ID of home. So when you're linking to multiple pages within a single HTML file, you need a unique identifier for each. That way you can link from one to another. So here I'm gonna change this to about. I am Jeffrey Way. I work for Envato. Okay, so now if we go back and we view this again, we're still only going to see the home content. By default, a page data role that's at the very top will be displayed by default. So how can we link to this second page? Let's create an anchor tag. And we're going to say, read more about me. So if we come back, that alone won't do it. And of course, I should close out the anchor tag as well. So if I click on that, of course, as we would expect, nothing happens. However, if I link to the hash about, so notice here, I'm linking to this div, okay? And we're using the hash sign. So now if we view it and I click on it, that scrolls. So let's go ahead and view this in an actual browser just to get a little bit more feedback. Now keep in mind when you want to utilize uh, transitions and things of that nature, you need to make sure that when testing you're using a browser that supports CSS transitions. And this is going to be uh, Safari and Chrome. So we're going to use Chrome in this case. Now let's bring it down kind of like a phone. And when I click read more about me, jQuery behind the scenes will change the display value and it'll transition the new one. So if I click it, the automatic transition is going to be slide. Now, you have a plethora of transitions available to you. So for example, if I want to override the default transition of slide, I can, I can use a new custom attribute. And this is going to be data transition. And that will be applied to the anchor tag that will be clicked. And in this case, why don't we change it to something like pop. Now what pop will do, pop is most typically used for things like alert boxes. So if I come back and I refresh, pop will zoom horizontally and vertically at the same time as you saw there. So let's do it one more time. There you go, easy, just a matter of adding a single value. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but we'll do some of the notables. Flip, you've seen this uh, very common with the iPhone where it'll look like the page is flipping. Again, this uses CSS transitions. I believe it uses rotation, uh, CSS3 rotation to accomplish this effect. Now, one thing I do note is when testing in a desktop browser, see how it reverses it? Because that's the way it works is it'll take the, the element and rotate it, it'll mirror it, and that allows for the rotation. But it looks like in a desktop browser, there's a little bit of a weirdness there. However, I have tested it in the mobile browsers, which is where this will be used, of course, and it works perfectly. But that's something to keep in mind. Nonetheless, still a very cool effect. Let's take a look at fade, very common. And now if I click it, rather than any specific transition, the opacity will fade. There you go, very nice, isn't it? However, of course, it looks like it did make mistake and place this within the header. Let's go there and fix that really quickly. Sorry about that. There you go. Very nice. Let's look at one more. So we have slide, slide up, slide down. You have the pop that we went over, the fade, the flip. Let's do slide down. And now if I click it, it's going to slide down on the page. So if I make this larger, you'll see it a little bit easier. There you go, very cool. So that's how you apply custom transitions to your elements. So again, we could take this even further if you wanted to apply another page. You can do this all in one page if you can. So this could be a contact form, 
We're not going to build it, of course, contact us. But we'll go over the basic idea. And just for the sake of time, let's put it in another paragraph tag, though you'll probably have this within a list view. But let's go ahead and do it. And this is going to go to contact contact us like so now let's go back and try this out click on it read more about us that'll take us there and if we click on contact us because we haven't overridden the transition it'll do the default right to left click it and now we're on the contact us page and we can style that however we want now in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to asynchronously load specific pages rather than placing them all within one file this time we're going to have an about page and a contact page and we're going to load that asynchronously with jQuery mobile in the next lesson